I don't know too much about Jordan Jewell. Quite frankly, I've made a point of not finding out too much about him. I don't deal well with the stress of, uh, of watching tapes too much and, and reading interviews of the fighter. Oh, he wants to do this to me, he wants to do that. That stuff just makes me grind my teeth and, and sets me on edge. It's a fight, if someone's supposed to get banged up real bad, if both of us go, so be it, I don't care. But, yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, let's go. You know what I, mean? yeah. I just want to go in with a good attitude and a, and a smile on my face and uh, try and knock the piss out of someone. Oh, just pounding him. Yeah, relentlessly pounding this guy. I'm stomping him, kicking him, I don't care, whatever, choking him out, whatever happens. But I'd like to see them leave on a stretcher. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this next fight of the evening is for the Apex Fighting Championship Canadian Welterweight Championship. It will be contested over three three-minute rounds, and the man in charge inside for the action is Philippe Chartier. First, making his way into the final round in the blue corner. He is from Team Bama and Hurricane Jiu-Jitsu. He stands 5 foot 11 inches tall. He weighed in at 167 pounds. He now has a record of two wins, zero losses. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Jordan Jiu. And his opponent, fighting out of Abayashi and Joslins, he came to the ring at six feet tall. He weighed in at 169 pounds. He now has a professional record of three wins. One loss. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Rowan Cunningham. Well, gentlemen, this is it. This is for all the marbles. Both of these fighters stopping their prior opponents tonight. To get to this point right here, okay, you know the rules. contesting when for the Canadian break, championship. Break. Both fighters looking coolly confident tonight, Joe. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking to myself here, if I'm Jordan Jewell, I'm pretty tired here, but i got to watch Rowan Cunningham attack me, and Cunningham is basically going to take the fight to Jewell to get that gas tank back down. Carlos, what hey, do you think? Hey, these guys got to be careful open up here. They both look like they're big bangers, but their chins are still cold, so it could be a short night. They're not, you know, if you, either fighter's not careful. Thunderous leg kick from Rowan Cunningham. I think Rowan's just going to sit here and stalk Carlos. He's going to wait till Jewel comes in and he'll take this fight to the ground and try and just dominate down there. Yeah, you might be right. In that case, we're looking for a third round knockout, I hope. <laughs> Cunningham holding a brown belt under Ronaldo Jacare de Souza. Well versed in the art of Brazilian oh, Jiu Jitsu, so for that, looking for the ground game. There, he gets a reason to take it to the ground. Jules laying the hands fly real hard, guys. See, this is an early round knockout that's possible. Yeah, Jewel, I think, wants to stay away from uh, Cunningham's ground game right now, but he needs to be careful if he gets trapped in the corner or too close to the ropes because you know Cunningham will attack. And a good job by Jewel circling out of the corner. Absolutely. Very, very shrewd moving. Now, jumping in with a super hand punch and landing a hard, dirty boxing uppercut. Both fighters grappling for, for position in the blue corner. Jewel here trying to pummel in that left arm, Carlos, and I'm wondering here what his game plan will be with a fresh Cunningham because you got to give the, the, the advantage to Cunningham on the ground right now. Should Jewel be attacking in this clinch or should he back away? Jewel's got to back away, but I don't think right now it seems that Cunningham doesn't have the strength to take Jewel down, and uh, this looks like it's going to be a stand-up match. As long as Jewel keeps him in this territory, I think it's going to win. That's the key to victory, and I agree with Carlos. He's got to keep this fight away from the ground for Cunningham. Cunningham just got to time his throw. Once he gets his fight down to the ground, it's a different world altogether. You see that heavy knee to the liver and another to the face thrown by Cunningham. Jewel doesn't want to stay down there too long. Standing up and throwing a couple of retaliatory knees himself. You got to give the keys here to Jordan Jewel for withstanding that neck crank there, and he's able to get out there, get the double underhooks, and throw those knees. I, he definitely does not want to go to the ground here, Carlos. Jewel looks like he's really worked on his takedown evasion skills, working the clinch hard and fighting to stay on his feet. Carlos, what do you do with an opponent like this if you're trying to force the ground? Well, this would be actually a great time for Jewel to make the preemptive strike and take Cunningham to the ground before he gets taken down, just like we'll see here. Now, it's a little too late, but an attempt at a takedown on his part first will allow him to disengage and get back to the striking game. And there's the first step by Rowan Cunningham clearing the one leg. You know what he's going to try and do here? He's going to try and slip right through into mount. You see him straightening that leg, trying to pull himself free out of half guard position. And he's clear. Now into side control and oh. stepping over into the full mount. Bad news.
news for Jack Hammer, Jordan Jewell. Good job by Rowan Cunningham getting that mouth, slamming that shin down to the ground to secure it. Ten seconds to go, and Cunningham rears back looking for some strikes, but Jewell doing an excellent job of making sure that those fists don't uh, He was connect. saved by the bell there. They've got those punches from the top mount, but they've done a lot of damage. You know, his head's going to be intact for this time, but that happens early in the second round. He's going to have a, a long night. Carlos, I can think of no more experienced opinion at this table than yours. Who do you give that first round to? I think to? it's uh, pretty clear, guys. You know, kind of hand by uh, a long margin on that one. Definitely, once that fight hit the ground, it was definitely Cunningham's world there. I did like Jordan Jewell's stand-up, and to tell you the one thing, Carlos is a fighter, I'm an analyst, you're a play-by-play -play guy, thank goodness neither one of us are judges, because who knows what the judges are doing with that call. Hey, I'm a fighter too, man. <laughs> Correct, yes? I've <laughs> punched in the face a few times. Definitely, definitely. Round two after these messages. Both fighters gearing up for the second three-minute round. Fast, fast-paced action. These fighters usually tangling for five-minute rounds, so they do not have to pace themselves. And you can see that with Cunningham just charging in with a leg kick. The pressure's on right now. Cunningham's going to take it to Jewel. Definitely. Beautiful. That was a beautiful front thrust kick. Stopped the action for Jewel dead in his tracks. No, but I got to say, Cunningham's got some work now. He's got a clinch. He's looking for it. He's he definitely... If he gets a takedown early, he's gonna, you know, he's gonna, he's gonna win this round again. And you see Jewel trying to get and a good job by Cunningham trapping the throw with his left leg. Absolutely, it looked like Jack Hammer, Jordan Jewel actually might have had the strength to execute that throw, but Cunningham very adeptly blocking it. And I have to say one thing, with all the talk about his jiu-jitsu skills, I'm very impressed with Cunningham's stand-up. He's been pounding away at the legs of Jewel. Well, it's all about the strategy, Paul. You know it, I know it, Carlos knows it. What could you do to get your game intact? And he's using those leg kicks to get that clinch because he knew Jewel was going to come up, and he timed the clinch, bang, he got it, and now it's a matter of just getting relentless in there. Well, you see Jewel come out in earlier of the round. Oh! Straight shot to the off. face to pound his way out of that Muay Thai clinch by Jewel. There we go. Preemptive strike on the takedown. So now he's got the top position. He earned it. He doesn't have to worry about getting mounted again. So this exactly is good territory. Exactly as you advised, Carlos. Exactly as you advised. And now we'll see what Jordan Jewel can do from within the guard of Rowan Cunningham. Rowan Cunningham has a spectacular guard. I have seen it for years upon years in the GTA area. When Rowan lived closer to my area, he won numerous tournaments with just strictly his guard game. He is a phenomenal fighter, but it's MMA, and Jewel can use elbows and punches to prevent Rowan from doing a lot. We saw Rowan looping his hand underneath his own knee, Carlos. What exactly was he, he, was he using that technique for? He's looking to set up a normal plata and then... Knowing a guy like Cunningham, he'll probably turn that into a triangle somewhere along the way and call it the night. Yep. Cunningham, Paul, is very, very adapted with those legs. He's got that Gumby thing happening all the time, but he's very methodical. He's always thinking two, two steps ahead whenever someone's in his guard. So if it was, if I'm, if I'm in Jordan Jules' corner, I'm doing whatever I can to break this up. And luckily, the ref did that for him. Exactly. Once again, all action all the time, and Cunningham wasting no time once he's back to his feet, lunging in with a power jab, and we're back in the clinch, oh. attempting a drop, underarm throw, but unsuccessful is Rowan Cunningham. Yeah, but he did a good recovery there. He's right back to underhook, so he hasn't lost any ground. If anything, the judge has got to take that into consideration. He's pushing the fight. Absolutely, Carlos. He's making aggressive moves, trying to finish this fight, and uh, showing his conditioning and his reflexes. When that throw didn't work, he was back on his feet and back in the clinch in a flash. Yeah, that is definitely Cunningham's patented throw. He loves that drop shoulder throw. And with 10 seconds left in this round, once again, Carlos, we give that round to Rowan. I got Whoa! it. Just as we say that, Jordan Jack Emmerjewel opens up with a beautiful flurry to punctuate this round. That's a tough round to call to both these guys. You know, that was a seesaw battle. That went back and forth. You know, Cunningham got some great takedowns, got a, a great position on the guard, and uh, he was making some great attacks. He pushed the pace, but again, Jewel, he landed some great shots, and you know, I think he evened it up there. 